Some programs cablecast on this channel might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion advised. And welcome to another edition of Graphic Content. I'm Dave. And I'm Jack. And uh, we're here to talk comics. It's our favorite subject, and we want to talk about it with you. Um, so how's, how's your month going? Fantastic. I'm very busy. Yeah. Making some animations right now, really f diving into some new media. You might notice the beginning credits might be a little different for this issue, brand new, episode. Brand new opening sequence. How are you, Dave? Uh, you went to uh, Toronto, I hear. I did go to Toronto. Um, a few months ago, and uh, a TCAF, the Tom Toronto Comics Art Festival, uh, and uh, right. And more recently, went to El Paso. Yes, right. more recently went to El Paso. Yeah. We're mainly going to focus on Simon Hansel. Mm -hmm. Mega Hex uh, was the first collected volume of uh, stuff that was mainly done online first, right? Like uh, in his Truth Zone blog? I believe so, yes. Yeah. I believe that's the case, yes. And it kind of took off. And he was from uh, his um, interview with The Strand. I get the, in, at The Strand, it, recently I saw on YouTube, I got the impression he was a bit surprised by his own success with yeah. the story. I think initially it was just kind of this ironic take on appropriated characters. Megan Mog is some European comic, if I'm not mistaken. Huh. Um, and he just thought it would be funny to put them through this kind of dark humor lens, yeah. but then it just kind of ballooned into ballooned. his own thing. Yeah, yeah, it just totally, kind of, totally. like, you know, the storms of creativity, it just kind of happened, and it was just this big thunderstorm of just pages upon pages of dark humor. Yeah. Um, um, so Mega Hex was the first volume. Megan Mog in Amsterdam with that delicious psychedelic lettering yeah. uh, right in the center there. Uh, and One More Year, which is a collection of additional additional stuff and yeah. um, you pointed out let's see that uh, life zone right there a lot of what appeared in one more year uh, appeared also in life zone yeah so. um, and I learned about Hanselman through this book back in 2013 when I exhibited at the Brooklyn comics and art festival comics art festival cab cab yeah, yeah. comic arts Brooklyn. Um, this and at that time I was just blown away by this book um, I wrote an essay, I put it on my blog, we'll make, make a link at the end of this, uh, writing about it, calling it the com best comic book I read in the year, for mm -hmm. the year. And uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact that, first of all, in terms of just the formality of it, it's incredibly well executed. It's expertly painted. The pacing is on that Santora beat, you know? He's all about the grid. Yeah. So it's one of those comics that's like almost harder not to read than it is to read. It's just like, it's, it's so easy to just devour. Yeah. Um, and that's largely because of the, uh, the characters. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. each, each character is just uh, their own voice. Mm -hmm. And they all represent these different, sometimes poisonous, <laughs> uh, aspects of, of uh, yeah. human, uh, I want to say, ennui or like... Uh, yeah, they're, they're the more uh, depressive qualities of humans. Well, one thing that I really, uh, really appreciate about him is he is writing about depression, mm. but he's writing it almost from a, you know, kind of a objective, objective kind of meta viewpoint. Point. It's not sympathetic. Like I don't have sympathy for Mog's son. Like Mog's kind of a jerk. Yeah. He doesn't treat Meg very Mog well. Mog is the cat. Mog, Mog is the yeah. cat. The cat who is the on again, off again, boyfriend. Yeah, of, yeah. Who kind of, of forces Mog. her to do sexual acts that she's not down with? Right, right. And like you know, they're just they they bring everyone brings each other down. It's right. this downward spiral. Right. Um, but I think what's the it, what happens is that there's this converging. Well, back to formality of it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, there's the characters are great and they're fleshed out. But I just want to applaud him for his typography. Mm. Um, I want to applaud him for the fact that he takes the colors of his painted panels to the edges, you know, which makes the illusion that it's going on 
post past the panel, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know, it's once again, like I was talking with Anya Davidson, there's that consistency of quality, mm. you know. I think all those, I, I think th this comic wouldn't work if he didn't have the formality down. If his typography was messy, if he didn't have his illustration skills of up for a visual communication, I wouldn't want to sit with these characters if it wasn't so expertly done because right. they're frankly lovingly done. Loving, yeah, and I think that's a really good <laughs> way of putting me. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, and the 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 colors are very painterly. The landscapes are painterly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, you have this contrast that you see a lot of the times, like with anime, like between these very cartoony forms in the characters versus a more, uh, at times, you know, realistic landscape. Yes, um, yes, his landscapes are getting stellar. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that, that adds to like the surreal quality of the whole work, I think, is just like you're looking at this alternate universe where like mm -hmm. uh, women who are witches are, are partners with, uh, with <laughs> humanoid cats um, and, and uh, friends with uh, humanoid owls and, were and werewolves. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it, it's just all very surreal, and it's all very much uh, a statement on the surrealness of suburbia, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it is surreal to like have everything at your disposal in, in, in a suburban landscape, and the, the boredom that accompanies that. I mm -hmm. think it's kind of uh, an, a, a repeating theme throughout the works, is like mm -hmm. suburbia is boring. Um, and depressing, and the these characters are surviving it, and it's not it's not always in the most positive ways. It's often in very drug-induced ways, and Simon Hanselman isn't necessarily saying that drugs make suburbia better um, because they they get into some really toxic situations, um, but it's a way out for these characters. Um, and you, you get to see the highs and lows of yeah. that kind of existence. Yeah, what I was thinking is that what makes it successful, it is simultaneously completely absurd, but also very mundane. Like, the characters are on one hand are owls, but on the other hand, you know, they're stoner stay-at-home people. Yeah. Um, I love this quote by Dan Klaus as a blurb. Simon Hanselman is the real deal for sure. He captures that stoner stay-at-home life so accurately that I actually find his comics really depressing and thank God I don't ever have to hang out with anybody like that ever again. <laughs> when I work at Hub Comics and I try to sell this to people, yeah. I say this is the comedy of terrible roommates. Um, it's like, have you ever had a terrible roommate? Yeah. That's what I ask the pe people. And I'd say 90% of people say yes. I'm like, in hindsight, it's like, you know, you think about the stories of how ridiculous that time was. Like, this is this book for you. It's, right. the, it's cathartic. And what I think what's interesting about suburbia is that it's the isolation of your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a seg segment in um, Megan Mog in Amsterdam, Amsterdam where Owl is literally trying to escape Werewolf Jones. Um, and he rents out a hotel right. to get yes. away from him. Yeah. And this is like a perfect Hanselman <laughs> moment because it's simultaneously hilarious and funny and slapstick, but kind of terrifying. Yeah. And that Al, he, he slams. break. He <laughs> break, and the Werewolf Jones slams through the door following yeah. him. Yeah. And he's from Tasmania, and um, I was thinking about other texts and culture from that time, from that area, and I was thinking of like, this is a very much darker thing, but like the Snowtown murders. I don't know if you saw that movie. No. It's the same thing, though, about how you can't escape your neighbors. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's very indicative and says a lot about drug culture. Because I think the big problem is it's not necessarily the drugs, but it's also your social circle. Yeah. If you're going to get clean off, say, heroin or something, it's not just the drugs. It's also you have to violently uproot yourself from your town, from, from your circle everybody of friends. you know, yeah. and start over. And that's incredibly difficult. And I think. Uh, that's kind of the commentary in here. It's like Owl is trying constantly mm. to achieve, and he's constantly brought down. Like there's even that segment where like it gets abusive. Like Mog's like, "You're 30 years old. Your, your body's crap. Yeah. Things are never gonna get better. Stop trying." It's like misery loves company, you know. 
Yeah. And yeah. I mean, to make a entertaining comic about people who don't do anything <laughs> is really hard, but I also think hyper significant right now. Mm -hmm. The uh, the humor in this book is just uh, or oh like God. laugh felt out hats. loud felt hats laugh out loud funny and and can we just I'm sorry to interrupt you but like yeah, felt yeah. hats you got to put like some things that is yeah, bar yeah. none one of the funny funniest comics I've ever read <laughs> this one right here but continue yeah yeah and there's just felt hats there's just like so Three pages. so so much uh, Four pages. like really like humor that you can relate to because you've experienced it in some way. Mm -hmm. Like the the one that comes to mind I think is in the first book where they're all just sitting on a bus and uh, the bus driver calls out the the name of a place uh, over the over the microphone and it's very mundane. It's called something like Ham Parade. Uh, I believe, sorry if I'm wrong, uh, but if it's, uh, it, but it, it's called Ham Parade and so they each get this picture in their head of what a ham parade would look like. You know, like uh, Mog, you know, sees maybe a, a pig in a parade, and Meg sees like a bunch of pigs marching down and flying balloons, and Owl has a very similar kind of vision. And then they get to ham parade, and it's very, it's this boring, mundane, suburban sight. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of how you, I experienced that as a kid, like, oh, that sounds amazing, mm -hmm. and it's the letdown. And it, it's kind of one of the, again, one of the repeating themes is, is how much of a letdown adulthood can be, um, especially, especially in your early to mid-20s as you're, as you're figuring out the adult world in a more isolated way, away from your parents. Meg has actual depression, like she has right. to take pills. Right. As do, and they have this whole you know, long episode in here where they go to Amsterdam and they don't take their medications, and it's just a disaster. Right. Um, and for me, I feel it's also about toxic relationships. Yep. Um, totally. And I think there is a crossover between suburbia and its boredom and the toxic relationships. And I think it's more, it's I, for me, it's like, cause there's just things to do. They got laser cause the tag, you know, yeah. there's the convenience store, you know, like, I don't know, like I just- All exciting I, stuff. I, maybe <laughs> I'm just obnoxiously optimistic, you know, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. I, I think it's more an attitude thing. And it's not really fair to thrust that upon people when they actually have, you know, prescribed depression or something. Yeah. Um, one thing I also really like is, and it's a, uh, it's almost a footnote in, in um, Megan Mog in Amsterdam, but there's the story arc where there's uh, someone who's trans and they can't go to the bathroom. Right, booger. Booger, yeah, yeah. And I think that's another thing is the fact that they all f don't feel like they fit into the social constructs mm -hmm. of this suburbia. Like they even go to that party and it's just like a bunch of like, you know, yuppie, you know, uh, kind of PC people. Yeah. And they can't really, uh, Meg can't even handle that, you know. And so her and Booger just sit out in the backyard. Smoking cigarettes, yeah. right, right. But I think that, I think it is, um, you know. And I mean, like, why, why does anyone hang out with Werewolf Jones? Why do he's, they hang out with he's, him? He is the, the guy that you knew that was just kind of a, a dead-end personality, who was the life of the party maybe uh -huh. in high school, who's still trying to hang on to that in a lot of ways. And what... Simon Hanselman does is he always kind of puts puts him and subsequently the group in a terrible situation and then goes even further than that. Because Werewolf Jones shows that trajectory of a party. At first you're having fun, then things get catharsis, then things get silly, then you start feeling sick, and then you're like, this is messed up. Yeah. You yeah. know, and it's like that trajectory of the good time of freedom, and it's like the, the you know the limitations of freedom, the dark humor in it, because right? Because it's like something simultaneously really messed up, but it's told through a comic lens with like an owl, you know, right. in watercolor, you right. know, and that's that 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 irony that makes you chuckle, um, but. You know, it's a messed up work. I mean, I've had people react to this, and they said I felt dirty after reading this. Yeah, like yeah. they like. I think it's it's a very powerful work. And, you know? and there is a kind of a, a freedom that you, as the reader, have that you aren't pay, partaking in any of this. 
that that you're and and a guilt that you do feel yeah. in in laughing at um, each time that Owl is put um, in some horrible situation uh, and is humiliated, or that. Uh, uh, the gang all has to run because they're they're running off on their tab, or they uh, set um, uh, they trashed a uh, a mini mall store where they were all temporarily employed. Mm -hmm. Like it, it it it's just all setting up these very almost sitcom like yeah. episodes episodes that are familiar to us uh, in some ways either because they are sitcom like or because we've experienced them. We've all had kind of crappy jobs in malls. Right. You know? Yeah. And um, I feel like they're all kind of um, living in these self-satisfying realities where they're ignoring problems and Owly's constantly like reality and that's why Re Owly gets such a bad hard rap mm. because he's always like trying to get things, people... He's the adult voice or the yeah. most adult voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the trope is that he's the straight man, and, but you know, classically in a Marx Brothers cartoon or something, they'd all just be like, you know, playing with clown shoes. Here they're doing like ketamine. Yeah, and that's where the dark humor comes in. I think you know that's yeah. where like the twist is. I really like because um, we've touched on all the characters except for maybe Meg, mm -hmm. and I really like uh, Hans Hanselman's approach to Meg. It feels really honest. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. like I said, at moments she's not sympathetic. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm like she's just being a jerk, you know. And uh, just just a female character that doesn't fall into any kind mm -hmm. of of uh, the trappings uh, or tropes that you would expect out of uh, female characters in comics. Yeah. You know, like just, just writing her off in a certain way or, or immediately like saddling her in some relationship. Yep. She, there's none of that. Like uh, she is a character in her own right. She's terribly flawed. Um, she's kind of the, uh, I'm, not, I'm not down with my Freud, but she's like the, uh, the id of the group or maybe she's the ego. I don't know, she's one of those. Um, yeah. She, you know, she, she, she tells it like it is. I, I, I find that like Werewolf Jones and per, to a lesser extent Mogger may be kind of like the decision makers. And she's just so stoned out of her mind. She just lets whatever cross yeah. her side. But, you know, like she'll walk in on a situation, just be like, screw this, I'm doing that. True, true. You know? true. So like yeah. she doesn't let the thing become too much of a boys club. Um, no. And, and it, it, uh, her presence in the work is... Uh, is refreshing as, as it is disturbing. I think we could safely say she might be the main character, I think. She, I mean, she's the always on the cover of the books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's not Owl on the it's, cover. it's definitely an ensemble piece. Uh, yeah. You know, she's, yeah. There's, it, there's even a comic about how they, they relate to Seinfeld characters, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they call her Elaine. From Seinfeld, and she's like, "Screw you! I'm not Elaine. I'm not anybody's Elaine," and uh, and and that's kind of maybe you know you could read that as Hanselman's statement on on uh, the way people try to easily pigeonhole characters in uh, in works such as this. It's like these these characters, you know, they do fit into certain molds that we expect out of storytelling, but um, they this work subverts them all, and uh, you'll find yourself laughing inappropriately at the various adventures of these of these uh misfits <laughs> so, so so i mentioned felt hats do you have a favorite episode so to speak there's just i'm trying to remember the story arcs i think the whole amsterdam episode yeah. um was was pretty was pretty riotous where they're uh they're they're out in meg meg and mog uh, which was the witch character and her boyfriend Cat, um, are off in Amsterdam. They're having a miserable time, and I think what I like about that is that they realize how important that Owl is to them. That he really is the glue putting their mm. their, their um, bizarre little triad together. Because they're they're having a miserable time. Uh, are they out of drugs or they're stoned out they of their minds? They forgot to bring their medications, yeah. and, and oh, then yeah. they go to like and do. Go ahead. I for, yeah. Go ahead. We're yeah. Gonna... Yeah. Something happens where they're having such a bad time. Owl is forced to go out there, and he wants to go out there because Werewolf Jones is making his life miserable back home. 
um, and and you do see some of the warmth. You know, you see a little glimpse. There's not a whole lot of it, <laughs> but you do see a little glimpse of the reason that they're all together. Mm -hmm. um, but in classic Hanselman fashion, you you know, for every moment like that, you get like ten moments where um, they're tearing each other apart. <laughs> yeah. um, but you know you do get occasional glimpses of warmth, and I think that's what I liked most about that that particular episode where um, where they travel all together to Amsterdam. Yeah, and I also love the way it ends. This book ends because I think it's I think one thing about when people are sad or depressed is because they don't lie to themselves. Like you know, if you really take the world at face value objectively there's 101 things to actually be depressed about. And, you know, that's the way it is in the ending. And it ends with Meg taking her pills. Mm. You know, everything begins to... To melt. Melt. <laughs> and then you flip the page, she's sitting quietly in isolation, and then she's <laughs> all happy-go-lucky. Mixed in with the credits for the right. books. So you there see, is like, this, this temporary bizarre. solution of yeah. you know, the pills solving the problem, but the reality is that, you know, yeah, things are sad. You know, life's not great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in a, in a in maybe like, so you already gave me like how you try to sell this book to people because you literally sell this book to people. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I guess, uh, so maybe like, uh, you know, any final thoughts about, about the book or, this, or the books and Hansel's um, work in general? Well, I think it, this book is very illuminating about the nature of depression. Mm. And I think these, there, there isn't really a resolution. Right. You know, it's just like literally the third book's called Another Year. Right. They're just doing, they're, they're stuck in this. And I think, you know, for people who know people with depression, I think this is really helpful to get into the mindset of where they're at. Um, and? And I don't know. There's hilarious moments also. And it's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, it is funny it's because... It's laugh out loud it hilarious. It is funny, though, because I have friends, and I laugh at it, too. But I have friends who are like, why are you laughing at this? <laughs> like... Because it's funny. I mean, it's dark humor, you know. Right, you know, yeah, it's, it's dark humor. It's very, very, very dark humor, you yeah, know. So I think sure. it's, there's a complex set of emotions that occur when you read it, which is the sign of really good art, you know. Yeah. I am both. I both cringe and laugh at it. Yeah. You know? And I think that it, there's that switch at certain points, at certain moments. You're like, it stops being funny, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh god, like th this is you know, real and utter poverty that these people are dealing with. Like this is. You know, these children are borderline being neglected and abused. Yeah. Like, this is not cool, yeah. Werewolf Jones. You know, but I think that's the nature of this insinuative, you know, toxic relationships. It's that bad faith of people being like, no, things are fine, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, the dog hasn't eaten anything in weeks. Oh, you know, hey, he'll be all right. You know, just, just be cool, man. You know, and I think, uh, I think what would be really great for Meg is it, she just needs to get out of there. She needs to just unclean. It would slate. be great for all of them. It'd be great Maybe for all of them. You know? I think actually the end of Life Zone, and I loved the end of this book. No, it was the end of Mega Hex. This is the only one that has some type of conclusion. And Where, then of course, is that the one with Owl riding off? Owl, yeah. Yeah. This is such a beautiful ending. It's yeah. just him telling them all off, and then he leaves on a plane. Right. Or it, it, I, he starts flying. This is just a gorgeous ending. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my theory is that he put this out with this ending thinking that it may not get picked up and it's like, well, this can end here right. or I can keep going because, of course, you pick up the next book and yeah. Owl's yeah, living with there. them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't really know where things fall in the timeline, but it, this yeah. is not important. For me, it's, I, yeah. It, it's more of, it, it's, it's kind of, again, that adds to, like, the dream state yeah. that all of this is kind of taking place And in. also that Seinfeld reference. It's like, it needs to, there's, there's this almost hellish thing that no matter how far they yep. advance, the next episode, they have to start they at the same place again. Same apartment over yeah. and over again. <laughs> Which makes television seem like hell when you yeah. think about it. Yeah. Like, um, what a great metaphor for for life, the sitcom. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> for a terrible life. Hi, you know? honey, or like Kramer stumbling in the way he did. I would tell people that you're 
your life doesn't have to be a sitcom. You can cancel that show and start a new one at any point, you know? Yeah. I think my getaway from this is if you meet a werewolf Jones in real life. Stay. Stay away. away. Stay away. <laughs> you don't have to be friends with everyone, you no, know? You, you got to take care of number one before you can, yeah, can take care about anybody there else. You there you go. Yeah. Therapy through Simon Hanselman. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So that's it for July. That's it. Yeah. So uh, thanks. Hope you have a chance to read any of these. Uh, thanks for listening to us ramble about comics, and uh, yeah. we'll we'll be back in August. Yeah. And uh, check out Simon Hanselman. There's a great interview with him online at the Strand that I suggest you checking out. Uh, we'll also uh, make a link to the essay I wrote on his work. And happy reading. Happy reading. Happy summer. See you next time.